This Solenopsis Invicta Fire Ant Queen has landed on the edge of a swamp. She may be far from her native habitat, but the Fire Ants are well known for their ability to adapt. Competition for food will be fierce. She will need to raise an army quickly to compete with the local predators. The colony lies in the shadow of a great titan to the north, an American bullfrog. This large female has found the perfect spot to feed. Sheltered by foliage and in the path of many wandering insects and smaller amphibians, she has no reason to move on. Eventually she will need to be displaced, but for now, the fire ants have more pressing business to attend to. The boggy soil surrounding the nest is lacking in nitrogen and phosphorus, nutrients vital for plants to photosynthesize and grow. To survive in this environment, some have evolved to supplement their mineral diet by trapping and dissolving invertebrate prey. Many of the milkweed plants growing nearby are infested with aphids. Their honeydew excretions present an ideal, energy-rich food source for the fire ants. Aphids far from the nest are vulnerable, however, and are sometimes relocated closer to home where they can be better protected from predators and thieves. The fire ants have encountered a tribe of Monomorium minimum black ants. These tiny little ants may seem feeble, but the Invicta colony would do well to treat them with caution. Although primarily scavengers, they are armed with powerful chemical secretions and have been known on occasion to invade fire ant nests. A small colony of Fadele Marisi big-headed ants have established themselves on a hill to the west. Scavenging for seeds, aphids, and dead insects, they are unlikely to pose a threat to the Invicta colony, if left undisturbed.
The colony is starving. There's not enough food to feed the new brood. The neighboring Monomoria Minimum colony has launched an attack on the fire ant nest. A magnolia green jumping spider, Lysoman viridis, has ambushed a fire ant. It prefers to hunt on foliage where it is less likely to be spotted by predators and prey alike. Out on the ground it's more vulnerable. snacking on lone ants far from the safety of the nest. The ants must defend themselves. The ants must fight. The ants must defend themselves.
The colony is starving. There is not enough food to feed the new brood. As the sun sets, the local amphibians begin to emerge from moist crevices near the water's edge. Lone invertebrates will be picked off quickly. The ants should travel in numbers, or not at all. A bombardier beetle, Brachinus altianans, is hunting for insects outside the nest. It may seem unwise for it to wander so freely amongst the large amphibians that share the swamp at night, but they would do well to leave it alone. This beetle is a master of chemical warfare. have clashed with a bombardier beetle. Feeling threatened, the beetle mixes a cocktail of chemicals that react together, boil, and explode from a valve at the base of its abdomen. At night, eastern narrow-mouthed toads patrol above ground looking for food. Ants make up 75% of their diet, so the small colony must stay alert. To make matters worse, they are excellent diggers. It's only a matter of time before one tunnels its way into the nest. The ants have set upon a green link spider, Puchetcha viridans. She prefers to hunt on pitcher plants, but out in the open, she loses her advantage. Far from defenseless, however, when threatened, she can spit venom up to 30 centimeters from her fangs. The fire ants and big-headed ants have met in their first skirmish. Sensing the new danger, the Morisi colony responds by awakening ancestral super-soldier genes in selected brood, feeding them until their heads are engorged with muscle. Big-headed ants now have a super-soldier cast to justify their name. At huge economic cost to the colony, these frenzied champions have been raised for one purpose. To crush the fire ants.
the ants will fight to the death. Dawn breaks, and the salamanders and toads retire to their damp alcoves to wait out the sun. Only the great bullfrog remains. She sits patiently on her throne, waiting for the next meal to wander by. The battle has begun. The ants must fight. A six-spotted tiger beetle, Chichindala sexcutata, is on the move near the nest. Its metallic green elytra make it unmistakable, and like its other tiger beetle cousins, long legs give it the speed to chase down small arthropods with ease. The neighboring Monomoria Minimum colony has launched an attack on the fire ant nest.
A raiding party of little black ants are stealing aphids. They must be chased down quickly. Even in small numbers, the fire ants are menacing, but in large numbers, they are virtually unstoppable.
The ants have uncovered a group of hungry checkered beetle larvae. The soft grubs may look defenseless, but they have big jaws and appetites to match. A fully developed checkered beetle, Enochlerus rosmaris, has been disturbed by the ants. It has the same ravenous appetite and slicing jaws as its juvenile counterpart, but now paired with thick armor plates, it represents a far greater danger to the colony. A raiding party of big-headed ants are stealing aphids. They must be stopped. Once again, dusk sets in over the swamp. Soon, the sandy undergrowth will be teeming with salamanders, toads, and nocturnal beetles. colony is starving. There is not enough food to feed the new brood. There are intruders in the nest. Predators are loose in the nest. The larvae must be protected. A narrow-mouthed toad has burrowed into the nest. It may be small for a toad, but its appetite for ants is insatiable. Secretions from its skin burn any that manage to escape its projectile tongue. Predators are loose in the nest. The larvae must be protected.
defenseless caterpillars exposed on the underside of leaves are a welcome snack for the passing fire ants. The colony should take advantage while it can. Few meals surrender so willingly. A curious ant has ventured onto a Venus flytrap in search of nectar. If it brushes against the hairs on the open, red-tinged leaves, they will snap shut, encasing the ant in an ever-tightening cell. There is no escape. The prisoner will be slowly digested until nothing more than a husk remains. For the swamp amphibians, the nighttime feast is over. Toads give way to tiger beetles, and the ant colonies step up their activities. If the fire ants are to stand any chance of establishing a long-lasting empire, they must grow quickly. There is no time to waste. The ants must defend themselves. The Monomoria Minimum Colony is almost defeated. The Invictor Army must press their advantage. A raiding party of big-headed ants are stealing aphids. They must be stopped.
The ants have been attracted to secretions of nectar produced by a yellow pitcher plant. In order to feed, however, the ants must position themselves precariously over a deep vat of digestive liquid. Waxy deposits on the rim ensure that any ant that steps too far in won't be stepping out again. The neighboring Monomoria Minimum Colony has launched an attack on the fire ant nest. A raiding party of big-headed ants are stealing aphids. They must be stopped. The Monomoria Minimum Colony is almost defeated. The Invictor Army must press their advantage. The little black ants fought to the last to defend their queen. Now the Invicta colony will enjoy the spoils of war. Defenseless larvae from the vanquished colony will be carried home and fed to the victor's own hungry brood. The workers have done all they can to improve these food stores. The workers have done all they can to improve this highway.
Night approaches, and the predators of the day give way to their nocturnal counterparts. As they encroach on colony territory, battles must be chosen wisely. Spread too thin, the fire ants could find themselves quickly overwhelmed. has been devoured by Eurychea quadradicitata, a dwarf salamander. It is nimble, fast, and slender enough to wiggle through tight crevices in search of food. Intruders in the nest. Predators are loose in the nest. The larvae must be protected. Predators are loose in the nest. The larvae must be protected. Thank you. 
Staving off another night of attacks, the Invicta colony once again proves its strength. Despite this victory, there is yet one obstacle that stands in its way. Ever present, the bullfrog looms over the ants. The beast must be defeated. There are intruders in the nest. A raiding party of big-headed ants are stealing aphids. They must be stopped.
a wingless parasitic wasp, Desi Mutilla occidentalis, more commonly known as the Red Velvet Ant, has wandered into Invicta territory. Although not on the hunt for fire ants, it will defend itself if threatened. Armed with an extremely powerful sting and displaying bright warning stripes, most creatures give it a wide berth. Morisi colony has fallen, their champions spent, and their queen vanquished. In the end, they could not stand up to the might of the Invicta army. The battle has begun. The ants must fight. The battle has begun. The ants must defend themselves. As the sun sets, the local amphibians begin to emerge from moist crevices near the water's edge. Lone invertebrates will be picked off quickly, 
the ants should travel in numbers or not at all. A false bombardier beetle, Gallerita bicola, is also on the prowl for small prey tonight. It impersonates the true bombardier to ward off potential predators, and its mimicry isn't simply visual. It too can spray defensively from its abdomen. In this case, the fluid of choice is the familiar formic acid. intruders in the nest. Predators are loose in the nest. The larvae must be protected. Linking themselves together, the fire ants have formed a pontoon out of their own bodies. It stretches from their home territory to a previously unreachable island, giving them access to new sources of food. A wasp mantid fly, Climachala brunea, has descended from her perch into the path of the ants. Unrelated to true mantids, her spiked raptorial forelegs are a perfect example of convergent evolution. An ant 
has fallen victim to a carnivorous plant. The salamanders and toads retire to their damp alcoves to wait out the sun. Only the great bullfrog remains. She sits patiently on her throne, waiting for the next meal to wander by. Workers have done all they can to improve this highway. The ants must defend themselves. The fire ants have mounted their first attack upon the great American bullfrog, Leaderbait Scatesbianus. The brave frontline soldiers are quickly crushed and eaten. They must surround and swarm the enormous creature to stand any chance of defeating it.
Again and again, soldiers clamp onto the bullfrog's leathery skin and inject their Solenopsis venom, but the beast shows no signs of wavering. The fire ants must maintain their resolve. have done all they can to improve these food stores. Overwhelmed with burning venom, the bullfrog finally succumbs to the might of the fire ants. Utterly spent, it collapses on the hillside, leaving the victors free to consume its body. Unbeknownst to the ants, the presence of the bullfrog was keeping many other local amphibians at bay. The power vacuum it left behind is attracting a host of salamanders and frogs eager to take its place. The ants should go to ground quickly and prepare for the imminent chaos. The ants must protect the queen.
As the anarchy above ground settles and with the invaders crushed, a new order is established. This is now the domain of the Fire Ant. Eat hearty. Grow strong. The work will continue soon. Hello? Shh, shh. <clears throat> oh, it's you. Is something wrong? No. 